Oh, let's just draw it. Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another Little Nightmares 2 theory video. In today's theory video, we're going to be talking about all the enemies that we have seen in the Little Nightmares 2 trailer, and see if we can theorise about them, and how they work and function within the world of Little Nightmares. And of course, we are going to see if there are any hidden enemies in this trailer that we can spot and theorise about. So stick around to the end of the video to find out more information on them. Sorry, I can't resist the classic pun. But before we get into today's theory video, this video is sponsored by me. How does that work, you ask? Well, I'd like to quickly mention YouTuber membership, as it's a great way to help the channel and continue supporting the work I do. And not to mention, you get some cool features along with it. Join today and get all these cool features. Anyway, back to the video. So I'm going to do the usual now, break up the video down into sections. So let's begin. Let's start with The Hunter. We first see The Hunter in the trailer in what appears to be a shack of some sort, filled with hunting assortments like animals hanging from the ceiling, whether these are hunted for meat or hunted for a sport like game, we'll have to find out in game. Also at his side on the table is the gun he's using. Notice I say gun and not a rifle, as the actual gun that we see in the trailer and from the Twitter page looks a lot like a Winchester Model 21 double barrel shotgun. If this is correct, I find it very interesting that he uses a shotgun over a rifle in the type of environment that he's in. Interestingly though, this would suggest that most of the encounters will be close encounters. We also see him at this time in the trailer performing the same type of action as the chef did in the kitchen level, tearing the bones off of whatever game is on the table. An interesting note here is that whatever he is killing and hanging has been hanging or killed for at least a couple of days as it's attracting flies around the shack as we can see in the trailer and these are definitely not particle effects because the way they behave and move are completely different. As for his appearance, it's what we're used to in Little Nightmares and yet again we see another mask. He seems to be wearing some sort of potato like sack with holes torn for where his eyes are. This isn't new to us as Little Nightmares fans, as we tend to see a lot of it on the moor. There are a few portraits of children wearing the sacks on their head. Not to mention, there is also a collectible sack for Six's head. What hunter wouldn't be complete without that little hat on top? The next shot we see in the trailer is the hunter standing on top of some rocks and scoping out the area in front of him with a sort of 1980s Soviet flashlight. My theory is that the flashlight will be used to detect you and thus you'll have to hide in the shadows or in the environment like we see in the trailer where Six and Mono were found crouched down. What will be interesting to see is if the light holds other properties like we see on the moor where the beam would actually affect the player. With the hunter talked about, I want to talk next about the teacher or the sadistic teacher as she's been labelled. If you didn't know, sadistic means to derive pleasure from inflicting pain, suffering, or humiliation of others. In the trailer, the first time that we see her is very up close in a body shot, and we can see her smacking a ruler into her hand uh, along with the Tarsia music, kind of like a 3D boldy if you will. After this, we get a more in-depth look at her and her surroundings. Now, one of the interesting things to note is the, the item on a desk. Not necessarily the pencils and all that jazz, but if you look on the right side, you can see the decaying apple. Now, what's interesting about this is that we have a connection to the moor. As on the moor, there is a picture of the exact same decaying apple in a portrait. Not to mention, there is a picture of the teacher on the moor in the residence DLC, where she is used as one of the key paintings to gain access to the next stage. Does this represent her importance in the world of Little Nightmares? Another thing that seems to be very apparent in the trailer is that the teacher is wearing a mask of some sort. What's interesting is that the Moor portrait, she seems to be showing more emotion in that photo. As in the photo, she seems to be a bit more excited if you will. Now if we compare these images from the trailer to the future banner on the Bandai site, when we look at the faces, it seems that hers has changed into the face that appears on more. I theorise that when the teacher is aiming for the player, she gets into a sadistic mode of some sort as she searches for the player. I say searches because from what we can see in the banner, 
It seems that she has the ability to stretch her neck and extend it to great lengths. And maybe this is how she will chase Six and Mono in the game, and maybe even out of the school and level of some sort. Another interesting point to make about the teacher is the fact that she doesn't actually blink within the trailer. And I think yet again, this backs up our idea about the mask again. Okay, so with that being said, I feel like this is the perfect transition into the students. So not much is known from the trailer about the students, as we see them being well behaved in front of the teacher, and then we see after a good ladling that they are made of porcelain. After Mono gives one of the kids a smack on the head, they seem to break off into little pieces. Note that this takes place in some kind of kitchen area. It seems like it would be belonging to the school, like a canteen of some sort. Something rather interesting about this specific set of frames is that we see some type of powder or gas come out of a broken head. And this looks like the same cloud that comes from the little broken geisha statues. Could these kids be the creation of something more and is the teacher the one controlling them? I think as an enemy, the students will be able to swarm you in the same old fashion as the shadow kids that behaved for the lady. I also do believe the only way you're going to be able to trigger these students is to somehow maybe step out of line within the school, as in go against the rules or do something to provoke them. If that's not the case, then it definitely will be the teacher that is controlling them, or the signal itself. Now, this brings us to our greatest enemy in the Little Nightmare series, the Tall Man. So the Tall Man first made an appearance in the Residence DLC after the credits and we first hear the sound of the crows at this moment. And then the TV begins to flash and a brief image of the Tall Man is shown. This same pattern is repeated at the end of the trailer for Little Nightmares 2. But in this TV, the image is much more defined. And thanks to that, we can connect the man on the TV with the man on the banner of the Bandai site, where we can see the man in a bit more detail the first interesting thing is the stance of the tall man and how he's looking down on Mono and Six in the image. From the image, we can see that he is a very slender figure and seems to wear a suit and tie, quite classy. In the photo, it's very hard to see, but after some playing around in Photoshop, we can see that he has a sort of smiling, sadistic face of some sort. It appears that he seems to share the same sort of expression as the teacher which is very worrying to say the least. He also has a hat. I'm assuming that the tall man is the person behind the signal tower, as it won't be able to run itself. The real theory begins with the tall man when we start to trying to piece him together with what's going on in the Little Nightmares world, to our knowledge, and interestingly, he does share a few characteristics from characters that we have seen throughout the series so far, for instance, the Mirror Man in the comics, and the North Wind. But more importantly, I find him a very good physical representation of the Hanging Man, as he shares the same stance in clothing, and of course being very tall and slender. They seem to even have the same sort of arm length. As an enemy, I do wonder how we will face the physical side of the tall man, as the only time we've ever encountered him is in some type of picture, and never the physical thing. So when Six and Mono get this final boss, will we have to defeat him in the same fashion as we defeated the lady, using some type of reflective method? Would we even see him physically, or would it be confined in the TV and having to beat him through that sort of method? Now, this is the part where I theorise about some of the enemies that I think will appear, but we didn't get to see much of them in the trailer. So let's begin. In the trailer, we are shown something or someone getting out of bed without a head. I'd like to nickname these kinds of creatures the Abominations. Now, I mention this because I think we will see many variations of these kinds of creatures. As we see in the trailer, there is a room specifically for parts of the body, like hands and feet. And as we can see from the trailer, these parts are not without motion. As we see Six standing on a hand and it clenches together. But with that being said, this leads me to another enemy that I think will be involved in Little Nightmares 2. And that's whoever is creating these abominations. Could this be where Dr. No fits into the story? 
and his responsibility as the next level craftsman or janitor. The reason I say this is because he is the only character in Little Nightmares to be called a doctor and he is going to require skills to be able to put living bodies together. As well, the janitor and the craftsman have been hard away practicing on wooden dolls. Someone needs to be qualified to do a living attempt, maybe. <laughs> What's interesting is that the body without the head is in a clinic or a hospital setting, as we can see the rooms covered with equipment for that specific room. Could this be the reason that the signal tower has even been made in the first place? So it could be a way to control these beings and keep them alive as long as they're connected to the signal tower. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching this Little Nightmares 2 Theory video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And as usual, if you have any theories of your own, post them in the comments below. I really want to get your opinion on this whole abomination creatures though. I feel like this might be an interesting avenue to take. But with that being said, if you like the video, make sure to drop a comment. If you like the channel and what I'm doing, please subscribe. And with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I wish you the best morning, day, or night, wherever you are in the world. And I'll see you all in the next theory video. Bye!